Hey, this is Matt. Once again, welcome back to another video. The paid request is sent for Bobby. Thank you so much for that. And for those interested in requesting pretty much any type of videos, feel free to send it either directly to my PayPal or join my Patreon. Both links are down below in the info box. And this is for the remake, 310 to Yuma, from 2007. Directed by James Mangold, who did Copland. And he's doing a new Indiana Jones film. And it stars Christian Bale, Russell Crowe, you got Peter Fonda, Ben Foster, Alan Tudyk. So you have a really good cast in this, which helps. And while I did not mind the original film, I would say I liked this film more because it did feel like it had a bit more action to it, had a bit more excitement to it. And I do think the acting is even a bit stronger in this. I think Christian Bale and Russell Crowe really, especially Russell Crowe, really nailed their roles. As, you know, Ben Foster, who I liked in films, uh, what was it, uh, Pandorum, among others. He plays the loyal but insane sort of dog. Like the crazy guy that's chasing after Russell Crowe to try to save him. The, the, the plot is Christian Bale has a wife and two kids. He's a poor rancher. He has one leg from the war. Like the other leg is a bit you know, fake. Their barn burns down. The older son, you tell, doesn't really respect his dad because his dad won't be gun ho about getting this stuff done while the son is. But Christian Bale's trying to have a level head about it. He's going to go into town to try to figure out what to do about this burnt down barn and these people are trying to get him to pay more money. Meanwhile, they come across this wagon being attacked by Russell Crowe and his gang, Ben Foster being one of them. And like I said, the action is a bit more exciting compared to the original. There's even a point where the wagon flips over and uh, it's definitely a bit more violent compared to the original. People getting shot and shit. Peter Fonda gets wounded. And Russell Crowe definitely plays an interesting character where you're kind of like Glenn Ford in the original. He's a bad guy, but you tell there's a bit of, I don't know, if morals or, or something deeper about the character. You know, Peter Fonda says, I'm coming for you. And Russell Crowe goes, I'd be disappointed if you didn't. Like he's one of those guys that like judges people based on their character and if you have a higher character he'll respect you more. Which is ultimately what happens with him in dealing with Christian Bale's character. But it kind of does follow the original film where they take Christian Bale and his kids horses and say we're going this way to town and then we'll put the horses up. If you want to come get them we just don't want you running off to tell on us. They go into town. Russell Crowe's character stays while the men go. Because Russell Crowe wants to have fun with his barmaid. Christian Bale goes into town. Gets help, help from some people. They're able to capture Russell Crowe. And then some volunteers, including Christian Bale, for $200. They're going to take Russell Crowe to the train for the 310 to Yuma, which is a There'll be a prison. And pretty much the journey there. Of the volunteers. Let's see you have. Christian Bale. You have this guy. I forgot his name. He's sort of the. The asshole of the group. Who works with the men that were fucking with Christian Bale's barn. Earlier in the movie. Forget the actor's name. I know I've seen him in other stuff though. Alan Tudyk. Who's the vet. But he's also a doctor. He joins the group. It was always great to have Alan Tudyk at the end there. I remember him from Tetra and Dale vs. Evil. Uh, he was also on the TV show Firefly and then the movie Serenity. He's done a few other stuff, but he's a talented actor. Peter Fonda, who of course from Back to the Day of Easy Rider, among other movies, good actor. He joins the group. So it's those four. Christian Bale, Peter Fonda, Alan Tudyk, and this other guy, which I forgot his name. Oh, and a, a fifth guy that's paying them the money. They, all five of them, take Russell Crowe on their journey. 
Meanwhile, Ben Foster and the rest of Russell Crowe's gang are trying to chase them down. As I said, Ben Foster, he knows how to play Insanity fairly well. Like he's loyal to Russell Crowe's character, but he's also insane with other people. Like there's this guy stuck in a coach on fire. He's like, you better tell me where he's at. And he's just willing to kill anybody in his way. Uh, there's another bit where he comes across. You guys a posse? Yeah. And he just shoots them. I hate posses. <laughs> so Ben Foster definitely knows how to turn on the crazy train, so to speak, fairly well. Definitely got the manner and the eyes for it. And Ben Foster is one of those guys that uh, is underutilized. He was good in the film Hostage with Bruce Willis. Uh, he was a good guy in Pandorum and one of the few leading roles that you think of. He just... I know he's in that Will Smith film, Emancipation, which I, I never care to see that film. Have zero interest. But he just seems like he just should. He's not as big of a star as he should be because he's a very, very talented guy. And throughout all I did, you do kind of see Russell Crowe kind of judging these people. For example, this guy that keeps aiding Russell Crowe on, seeing this song about hanging and not letting him sleep. And then the next thing you know, in the middle of the night, Russell Crowe stabbed the shit out of him in the knife in, in the night with a fucking fork to the neck. <laughs> Maybe you shouldn't have given him a fork to begin with. Um, or Peter Fonda, who's judgmental, but then Russell Crowe's saying, Yeah, you believe in Jesus, but so what apparently Jesus don't like the Apache? Well, see, in the war, this guy, I remember him and his men, they were shooting down men and women. Well, they were doing this and scalping men. Well, I do remember you shooting down some kids as well. And they're like arguing and... I said, throughout the film, there's it goes at a pretty decent pace compared to the original 310 to Yuma. Where you have some very competently directed action sequences. Uh, you have some very capable acting from this cast. Let's say Russell Crowe definitely plays an interesting character. Where he said he's not a pushover. He's not a good guy. But at the same time there's a bit inner depth to them. And then Christian Bale. He's not going too over the top. Yelling, snarling. He's playing it low key. But at the same time you tell he's a father that. May wants to prove to himself or to his kids that he could accomplish something. You know, one of the things he tells his wife is, you know, I'm standing on one leg waiting for God to tell me an answer. And he hasn't yet. He hasn't answered yet. And, you know, this is a guy committed to saving his farm and helping his family. And ultimately wanting to do something right. And you tell throughout that the Russell Crowe is kind of admiring his idealism as a character that you kind of get the gist of, you know, Russell Crowe's character is maybe abandoned by his parents or, I think someone had an interesting thing where, in a weird way, Christian Bale is the father he wishes he had. Like the way Christian Bale is a father to his son. Maybe Russell Crowe wishes he had that type of father. And when I read that, I went, you know what? I could see that. That's actually an interesting take on it. Because, you know, he's offering Christian Bell money. And I said, well, wait a minute. You got the money to save your farm. In fact, I'll give you $1,000. And you could do a lot of things. He says no to it. Um, ultimately, his older son rides in, and I know that's different from the original, where the older son did not get involved. Um, like, there's, there's little differences. There's definitely more action compared to the original. The ending is different from the original, 
which I'll get to in spoilers. The like I said there's a bit more talk in the original. Like there's a bit here where Russell Crowe helps him with these Native Americans, but he's able to get away, and he gets captured by these other people. And one of them is Luke Wilson. I mean, oh shit, there's Luke Wilson from Idiocracy and a very fun X-Files episode called Bad Blood. And uh, he was in, what was it, uh, Old School. So, it was fun to see him in there. But then our characters are able to, to help him out. To say he's our prisoner. And also, I don't believe in this torturing business you guys are doing. So, I did tease his battles where Russell Crowe is, you know, he's not a good guy. But at the same time, like I said, there's a bit more to him. And I guess the end of spoilers for that. I would say the thing with Peter Fonda, where you you learn more about Peter Fonda's character, is like, whoa, this guy shot kids and stuff, and they go back and forth. Ultimately, Russell Crowe is able to push the guy off a cliff, <laughs> but then that's when Christian Bale's kid arrives and is able to get to drop on him. Or later on, when Russell Crowe's captured. And the men go in and go, hey, he's our prisoner. And Luke Wilson and them try to attack. Well, they don't really try. They pretty much warn, listen, he's ours. Get the fuck out of here. Well, listen, I got a job. And it's to get him on that train. So a fight occurs. They will escape. But Alan Tudy did get shot. And he dies. Which I think that's different. Does I know what, like, one... I think maybe it was him or a different character I think did live in the original I'm trying to think but especially in the finale when the numbers are dwindling down where the the guy that was going to pay the money's listen I'm gonna pay you but it's done it's over and listen, just come with me and your kid and we'll get out of here and I'll still pay you the money, blah, blah, blah. But now Christian Bell's committed to his friend. It's the right thing to do. And as he tells his kid, listen, you got the best parts of me. You just remember your old man went to that station when no one else would. And so you do really see Russell Crowe appreciating and respecting this idealism to the point that he actually helps... Christian Bale get to the train station. In particular, this scene where there's a part of Russell Crowe's choking him out. Say, like, what, you want to be a hero again? And he's like, I've never been a hero, Christian Bale says. You want to know how I got this lace shut off? We're in retreat and one of my men shot it. You try telling that story to your kid. I guess in a way, he Russell Crowe just kind of understands what Christian Bale's doing, and I just see some people going, "Well, they I still don't buy Christian Bale helping. I mean, I still don't buy Russell Crowe helping Christian Bale. I still don't buy Russell Crowe doing this." And he's even shooting his own men, which it, it did establish he's willing to do that. Because when they attacked the wagon, and one of the people in the wagon got the drop of one of his men, Russell Crowe just shot the guy and said, listen, you weren't on your guard. And You can tell that Russell Crowe doesn't really respect his men, like they're there to serve a purpose. But you know, he's calling, hey, look at those animals out there and such. So like you can tell he doesn't respect them, and he's living a life... He kind of reminds me a bit of Napoleon in Assault on Prison 13, the original. Now I would say I like that film much better and that character much better, but that's where he reminds me of. A bit of that. Which is a good thing. Because that's a very good character in uh, Assault on Prison 13. And so, 
you know, the finale is definitely more exciting. Trisha Bale's able to shoot some of the, the guys coming for him. They're able to get to the train. But then Ben Foster, even though Christian Bale, I mean, even though Russell Crowe yells, no, don't do it. Ben Foster shoots the shit out of Christian Bale. His, uh, Trisha Bell's son watches. Russell Crowe looks down, and you just see the anger in his face. Like, this is the, probably the one decent guy I've seen in the longest of long times, and he was cut down trying to do the right thing. So, when he's given the gun, you tell Russell Crowe looks up, and I know Russell Crowe has had his issues. And what have you. But you know what? He's he's a damn good actor. He's a damn good actor. And he gives his one look to Ben Foster. And man, you just... No dialogue is needed you to tell the whole conversation. That Ben Foster's realization was about to happen. And Russell goes like... Pff, 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 pff. He even goes up and gives a double tap to the Ben Foster. And that was another thing, is that before that, you know, him and Trisha Bell share this funny anecdote where Russell Crowe says, well, I gotta admit something. Yuma, I've been there before, and I've steeped there. Twice. Meaning that he's not too bothered by Yuma because he knows he did just escape there again. He knows how to escape from there. And then Trisha Bell tells a story about, by the way, you said I was stubborn. I'm not stubborn. Why are you tell me that? Oh, I don't know. I just, well, you know I wasn't stubborn. And I guess in a weird way, you just see that the two of them, that's kind of the moment that they become friends. And while Russell Crowe's character, he might have had a Dane, but... Who knows if he's ever had a friend. And this is probably the closest he's ever had to a friend where he did respect the guy. And so when Trisha and Bell's character dies, that's where you see the fury of Russell Crowe's character. Now I kind of should have expected that, you know, what Trisha Bell's character would die. Just see like that type of thing that would happen with this kind of movie. Would it have been effective if, like, he was shot in the gut? I don't know. Would Russell Crowe's character have killed his men if Trisha Bell's character was just wounded instead of uh, killed? I don't know. Maybe, maybe not. I don't know. Maybe that's up to the viewer. Maybe it's one of those scenes that maybe Trisha Bell's character is wounded, and then he's got this choice where he sees Trisha Bell's son watching and sees Trisha Bell, who again is wounded, and if he doesn't get help soon, he's going to bleed to death. And maybe, maybe then Russell Crowe makes a choice. Maybe it's one of those scenes that Ben Foster's like, you can finish the job and he's thinking about it and then he does that look and then boom 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 and then maybe they kind of shake hands and then crow goes on the train some people might, I would have not minded that some people may have been bothered by that but um, actually now I think about it I probably would have preferred that I think that would have been more interesting where there's more doubt of what Russell Crowe would do because okay he has a chance will he shoot him or will he shoot his men maybe they did give a bit more down suspense while when Russell Crowe gives that look like you know where it's heading but I guess they felt killing Trish and Bell's character was 
what was needed for the story. Like I said, the more I think about it, I don't think it was needed. But I guess for them, they felt that was a more dramatic punch to it. Or maybe because James Mangold felt that the character dying is what gave Russell Crowe the push to kill his own game. And if he was wounded, that wouldn't hit. I don't know. I'm not James Mangold. I don't know how he thinks. Uh, the store. I don't remember the store, but I don't remember it being bad either. But if you're asking me to how many bits of a theme, I can't remember. I remember the original had seemed like a bit more of a catchy theme song. This doesn't really have that, which I guess it wouldn't have fit with the tone of it. It's definitely a darker, more violent version. I guess that's up to your preference as well, which kind you're open to. Because, I mean, the, the way the original ends is both of them on the train. Which I actually would not have minded that shot. Both of them on the train ride in and they kind of have this awkward but kind of sit with each other but yes yeah, it is I did quite enjoy the the movie I, I thought it was a pretty good western I thought it accomplished what it had to do fairly well and overall the, the cast definitely helped this quite a bit and they did a really good job on the, the in the acting front of this movie. With some nice character work and some competent action sequences. So this is a pretty good Western 310 to Yuma. Gotta admit. So with that said, thanks for watching and we'll see you later. Bye bye.